I'm Eric, this is Yeti Garage. Today I'm working on my 1955 Chevrolet pickup. I've had this pickup since 1994. It's my daily driver for a long time. And then years ago, I thought I needed more power, so I built this little 350 for it. And since then, it has not been a daily driver. There's just a, a ton of things that need sorted out on it, and I've just never put the time in to do it. And it's finally time to do that. So, friend Blake started helping me tune it. We've got it running pretty good. Now the next issue is the converter is too tight. I bought a looser converter. I bought a B&M hole shot. So I can either drop the transmission or pull the engine to put a converter in it. Usually I drop the transmission, but this oil pan is leaking pretty bad on this thing. So two birds with one stone. I'll pull the motor, switch out the oil pan, and uh, put a new converter in it. There's probably a dozen other little things I need to do while the motor's out. So first step, pull the motor. So I got the motor out last night. Um, Blake stopped by, gave me a hand, and then Dustin and his boys showed up. So I noticed I have some, I have a lot of oil leaks going on on this thing. I think the valve covers were leaking, and then definitely the back of this intake manifold is leaking. So I'm gonna reseal the intake manifold. I don't know, I might switch to different valve covers. Definitely changing the oil pan. I bought just a regular stamped steel oil pan. I'm gonna clean the motor, paint it, get rid of all this yellow. And then I also went to the wrecking yard, picked up all the aluminum brackets to put a serpentine set up on the front of this off like a TBI GM truck. I think it was like a 93 Suburban or something I got everything off of. So I'm gonna start with cleaning the motor uh, under the hood the pickup could use a little cleaning also and then before I paint um, fit that serpentine setup and make sure I don't need to modify anything I think it just bolts right on but so time to clean all right I pressure wash the motor and the pickup Got most of the big grime off. This is still gonna have to be wiped down with acetone before I paint it. When I pulled the pan off, there was a little bit of grime on the bottom of the pan, but nothing to worry about. Everything looks really clean inside there. No wear on any of the like, gear drive set up for the front or the rollers on the, the rockers. Everything looks really good. So I did buy some stamped steel valve covers I'm gonna put on and put that new oil pan on, tape off all these all this stuff like these port, the exhaust ports and everything. Wipe it down with acetone and paint it.
Okay, the motor is definitely looking better. Got it all cleaned and painted and most of the serpentine setup bolted on. I ordered an AC compressor, it's on its way and I have to modify the power steering pump because I'm gonna put hydro boost for the brakes. While I'm waiting on those few things, I have this O2 bung or this bung from a run a air fuel ratio gauge in here so I can tune that carburetor through all the RPMs and then put it in the top of this exhaust pipe on the driver's side and I figure while the motor's out it'd be a lot easier because I can sit where the motor goes and reach over there and make that weld. I already put the new converter in the transmission and I put a different pan on the bottom of that transmission and then I picked up a hydro boost setup I think it was a 98 Suburban. I'm going to have to make a new mounting plate for it, but I'm going to take all the, the vacuum assist brakes off and this, I have a canister up here. This motor doesn't create any vacuum at idle, so the brakes have never worked that great. If you have to use them multiple times in a row, like in traffic, you run out of vacuum and then your legs get tired because you're holding the brakes. So fix all that issue with hydro boost but right now I'm gonna drill a hole in that exhaust pipe and make a weld Here's the Hydro Boost. It had this mounting plate on it, I took off. And then I made a paper pattern. And then transferred that pattern to steel. And then I still gotta drill this hole in the middle. I don't have a inch and five eighths hole saw. So I'm gonna have to run to the store and get one, but it looks like it's gonna fit pretty good. So the way this has a, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, has a rib here, so that plate can't go all the way around those holes. I, was, I think I'm gonna tack a half a washer on here so I know it's the, when the nut tightens down, it's pushing on the plate. 
We got a majority of the holes in the firewall filled. So I got some over here, but most of these holes are for the heater assembly. So I'm gonna leave them. And I was thinking about pulling all this wiring off, but it's not too much of a rat's nest. I think I'll just leave it for now. So I'm gonna drill out a hole and then sand this firewall some more and paint it black. And I think we'll be about ready to put the motor back in. Okay, I'm gonna go to the store and get a hole saw. Okay, so I drilled the hole and then I had to build up tacks on top of each other and then filed it down to make this little tab and that fits in this groove to keep it, I guess, from spinning around. Patching holes in the firewall. I ended up um, deciding to move a bunch of this wiring around. And then, let's see if that light picks it up. Decided to paint it this teal color. And then the firewall, I'm going to do black and the inner fender's black. So I got the firewall painted. Came out pretty good. And then the Hydro Boost is mounted. I'm gonna build a bracket to mount the AC compressor. I think that's about, about it. Maybe a couple other little things before I put the motor back in, but getting close. My AC compressor showed up and I have to make an adapter to mount it in this bracket. There's some companies that make one. The problem is it puts this mounting bolt right about here, which looks way better than what I have going on, but the problem is I'm running tall valve covers. So it hits, it'll, the back of the compressor will hit the valve cover. You have to run short valve covers or standard valve covers, and I can't because I have uh, roller rockers in here. So made a pattern and then just cut it out in some quarter inch plate. One of them I have in here right now. You can kind of see. I'm gonna put the other one back here and then put some spacers in between, weld it all together and paint it, and there'll be bolts that go all the way through. And then on this side I'm using the the hole into the the actual bracket. So there's the bottom two bolts of the compressor will be hooked to the three mounting holes of the GM TBI bracket.
Okay, I got a bunch of bunch of stuff hooked up. Right now I'm working on this hydro boost setup and I grabbed the hoses off that 98 Suburban I got the hydro boost off of. The issue is the, the power steering pump is off like a 93, um, I think a Suburban also. So it has a O-ring style seal in it. The steering box, this whole pickup sitting on a 1980 Chevy pickup frame, it is a double flare for the seal. It doesn't have the O-ring style hose. So let me see if I can find it. The hoses have this style of an end where it has an O-ring to seal. The steering box has this kind of an end, a flare. So I just cut the end off of the hose. I got a flaring tool. I'm going to flare it, use the nut off the old hose. And that should be, that should be it for the hydro boost setup. Okay, it's back together and running. Looks a lot nicer under here. So I was reminded of an important lesson for the last two days. I've been trying to get it to run right. It wouldn't run. I mean, it would kind of run. It wouldn't idle up. It wouldn't really idle. It wanted to backfire. I thought something in the, the floats were stuck and it was flooding itself out. I took the carb off, looked at that, messed with the timing a bunch. Finally, last night I ripped the intake off thinking it was a, a internal vacuum leak because I couldn't find one on the outside of the motor. And then I started just thinking the only thing I had changed from how this motor was set up before was the ignition system. The cam's the same, the, I didn't adjust the valves, I didn't mess with the timing, the carburetor's the same, so I had added an MSD box and a, a small cap HEI. So this morning I got all mad about it and put the old, uh, well not the same one, but a large cap HEI. I don't know if you can see it in there. Fired right up and idled perfect. So something's wrong with that. I'm thinking of MSD boxes. I've been kicking that thing around on a shelf for 10 years. So something must have went wrong. Loose wire in there or something. But an important lesson. If you only changed one thing, Probably start looking at that one thing first rather than before you waste a bunch of time on other stuff. So, I got it running pretty decent. Let's see. it for the front of this pickup right now. Next I'm gonna pop the bed off and I need to see notch the rear. It doesn't have hardly have any clearance and I have some new shocks for the back. I think I'm just gonna weld the rear end up. I was gonna put a spool in it but I think I'm just gonna weld up that weld up the spider gears and I don't know there's the five or six little things that need to happen underneath the bed so it's worth taking the bed off or ripping at least the floor out of the bed. So that's next. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like the video, 
appreciate it if you click the like button. If you like this kind of stuff, subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching.